Good morning, everyone. Welcome to True North this morning. This is our Sunday before Remembrance Day, so we always take time in the servant and the service to to go through our act of remembrance, to pause and reflect upon those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for this great country that we live in. So I'm going to ask that you will stand with me for the opening part of our service. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. pray. Gracious God, we are humbled to be able to go through this act of remembrance together to give thanks for those that have laid down their lives for this great country that we live in. We thank you, God, that you have blessed us with such a great land. And as we go throughout this week, we pray that you would uh, bless our, our men and women that serve this great nation. We pray for those families that mourn the loss of loved ones, for those that, that gave their lives. And we pray that as we reflect, that it would just stir within our hearts the great cost of freedom. 
And Father, may it also just draw us closer to you and remind us of the great sacrifice that Jesus has made for us so that we can be set free from sin. Bless us as we go throughout this service, God, and we just thank you that you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may have a seat. Just a few announcements for you. Um, Next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating communion together, but also next Sunday, we want to take time for prayer with one another. We have a number of people in our congregation that are going through a different, difficult season of life, uh, for whatever reason it might be. And so next week, we're going to provide opportunity that if you'd like to come forward and just be prayed over, uh, we would be honored to do that. If you have something that's going on in your life, you're like, you know what, I'm not really ready to to share what's going on, but you would like prayer, then feel free to uh, send me an email, and, and I will certainly, as discreetly as possible, uh, uh, pray for you as well uh, in that moment together. So it's just a, a heavy burden. We know a number of people are carrying, and our church family would just love to be able to, to gather around one another and to lift one another up in prayer. So, uh, so that will be next Sunday uh, during our communion time. Just want to remind you as well that uh, there is a dessert auction coming up in Jacksonville on November 12th. So uh, that is going to be at 6.30. This is their fundraiser for the Dominican Republic trip that is going on. There's a number of us from this congregation that is going on that as well. Uh, and uh, so that is there if you'd like to be able to um, help out in that way. Also in December at our Christmas banquet, we're going to be doing a silent auction. So that money from the silent auction is also going to go to the Dominican uh, Republic trip. And uh, I'm going to grab a couple of pictures of the church that they've started to build down there. Uh, they started to put the walls up this past uh, couple of weeks. And, uh, and I guess the responsibility for our group, uh, at least the, the men, is going to be to put the roof on, on that church. So we're looking forward to that and the women with just the the different opportunities to, to come alongside of other women down there. And so it's uh, lots of opportunities to, for us to uh, provide ministry. So uh, I'll send that out in an email with the dessert auction and then also with our silent auction coming up in December. And uh, I'm going to send you in that email as well just to let you know that in our library that Jeanette McDougall and a small team have been working really hard to, to rework our library and to bring it up to date. And so she has a section in there from the Atlantic Baptist Women's Reading List. And I was just looking at some of the books, and, and they're really good books uh, that she's bringing in for that. So, uh, so that is going to be when you go through the doors straight through, you'll see a display there eventually. And, uh, and so there's... Um, uh, some new resources in there, so we'll send you an email for that. Uh, for those of you that don't know, our library is located through these doors, the double doors back there. Uh, you go in, you can find a book, you can just sign it out on the sign-up sheet there, and when you return it, just set it on the, on the countertop in there so Jeanette can sign it back in and, and put it back where it goes, so uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, that is all. I have my announcements. I know the women had a great day here yesterday for their... Uh, um, simulcast with Beth Moore. Uh, they haven't got a damage deposit back yet, so that should tell you how well it went. So uh, it, was a, it was a good time for them to come together and to have Bible study together and, uh, and a meal together, and it was encouraging to see, see those things uh, start to pick up again. So thank you to Judy McIsaac and her team that put that together, and, uh, and it, was a, it was a lot of fun for them. Uh, this morning, we're also going to take up offering again. Uh, we haven't passed the plate in a number of years, so what does this mean for you? Well, if you give online, then you are still free to give online. Uh, you can give through e-transfer, and, uh, and that comes right through to our office. Uh, the Dropbox will leave the one in the entryway still available for you. If you prefer to give that way, you can do that. You can give through direct withdrawal. It can come out every month from your account. And, uh, and there's forms in the entryway. Myself or Linda could talk to you about that. And we're also going to pass the offering plate again. And so if you are a guest with us, you are not obligated to give in any way. This is an opportunity for the church to worship together in our giving and also to just be praying for it. Just wait one second for me. Yeah, we'll pray here in a second. You, you, well, get from her. No, get, get from Cindy. Hold it right there. So yeah, you don't leave until there's something in that plate. All right, and, uh, but, but as we give in this way as well, and so if you give online, if you give in any other way to the ministry of True North, this time as the plate goes by, 
just pray for the gift that you gave, that God will bless it. Ministry costs money. Uh, there's a lot of different things that go on through the ministry of True North that you enable every time you give and that you bless. And so we appreciate that very much. And so this is just a practical way for us to be able to, to give thanks. So we're going to pray. Nanette is going to have a special piece of music for us, and then we'll release the kids to get money for the Lord. Cindy. Yeah. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And no matter how we give to the work of the gospel, we know that it is blessed by you when we give with, uh, with our heart in the right place. And so, Father, we don't want to uh, do this in a way that uh, we feel like we'll get something back when we, when we give, but it is just out of, out of uh, response to your generosity to us that we want to give back to you. God, we thank you for the ministry that has taken place. We think of uh, the women's ministry yesterday, uh, our youth group on Friday night, Sunday morning worships, our life groups that are taking place. Uh, you know, we've got your back. It's all these different ways that uh, people come together, our quilting group, to those that use our gym. Um, there, there's so many different opportunities that uh, we are blessed to, to be able to do because of these great facilities. And we thank you for the missions that we are able to support as well. Uh, through Canadian Baptist Ministries and uh, our own uh, Atlantic Baptist uh, Canadians, uh, Baptist of Atlantic Canada, to, uh, to uh, Pioneer Ministries, just uh, a host of different missions that we support, not only locally but globally. And God, it all comes through the generosity of your people. And so as we give this morning, as we've given online, as uh, we sent an e-transfer, whatever method we have chose to use, we pray that it's blessed by you. And that is a reflection of our love for you, God. And uh, we are so grateful for every good and perfect gift. So bless us as we give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I'll invite you to stand up with us as we begin our service with doxology. is taken from Psalm 62. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. If all the plans I make are wrong, your love stays the same. Your life will guide me through it all. I'm hanging on. I'm leaning in you. Nothing can reach the end of all your faithfulness. Your grace is with me. Every shadow, every test I'm hanging on, I'm leaning in you. I don't know where you'll take me, but I know you're always good. My hope is built on nothing less. Great love. 
safe with you on solid ground. I'm hanging on. I'm leaning into you. I don't know where you'll take me, but I know you're always good. My hope is built on nothing less. your name I'm holding on I'm holding on to you my hope is built on nothing less than your great love your righteousness I will not walk another way Trust your heart, I trust your name. I'm holding on. I'm holding on to you. I'm holding on. I'm holding on to you. I'm holding on. I'm holding on to you. I'm holding on. so much for this day and I thank you that we can come together and we can just reflect on the lives of the men who fought for our country and fought to keep it free and fought to keep our liberties and everything else free and Father I thank you so much for their lives and I thank you for their sacrifice but mostly I thank you for the sacrifice that you made to keep us free and our spirits free and our in our future free Father and I just thank you so much for the sacrifice today Amen Thank you, worship team, and thank you, Nanette, for that wonderful piece of music this morning. I didn't really intend for this to become a three-week sermon series. It just kind of worked out that way over the past couple weeks. You know, we're looking at uh, Jesus and where he was willing to go and who he was willing to uh, to, to sit down at a table with, and we were talking about the, the sinners and the tax collectors that he was getting tied up in with. And then uh, last week we looked at the salt and the light that he calls us to be. And then I was just reading this past week of a, of a story in, uh, in Luke. And it was really a great example of a tax collector, uh, you know, immediately becoming salt and light in his world. I'm like, well, I, I can't give this one up. So, uh, so we're not going to pass over it. We're going to go and, and talk about uh, this piece of scripture in Luke of a very famous character that, uh, that you know very well if you grew up in the church, and if not, then you'll be introduced to him this morning. And so here is the story of Zacchaeus, and it's in Luke 19, beginning in verse 1, and this is Jesus entering into Jericho and was passing through, and, there was, and a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was But he was so short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed in the sycamore uh, fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Let's pause right there, Caleb. So here's the the story. You know, here's Jesus coming into Jericho. Uh, He goes into these towns and everybody just kind of wants to to flock to see him because his reputation is growing as one who uh, will heal, who is saying these great teachings that people are just, uh, have never heard before. And so you can imagine that as he would come into Jericho, there would be a buzz about Jesus, and they would want to see him. 
And so they all gather around, and in this town, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Now, we have talked about this over the past couple weeks, that if you were a tax collector in that day, uh, you were hated by both your own people, the Jews, you were hated by uh, Rome, really, because they were just using you. Uh, you were in no man's land, and, and, uh, and, and a lot of enemies. Uh, no one likes paying taxes, right? I mean, uh, we get upset, you know, diesel going over $3, right? Like, that's craziness. And, you know, that's supposedly a legal way of looking after things. Well, tax collectors would only uh, do things a little more shadier than even that. Uh, they, would, uh, they would collect taxes. Now, they only had to collect enough to make Rome happy, but they would make their living by collecting even more. And so whatever they could get at you, they were going to get at you, and they had Rome behind them to enforce it, and a tax collector could be very rich. Now, like anything, to become a chief tax collector, you had to be a very good tax collector. And then you would get promoted to chief tax collector. So we're taking this up a notch, you know, in the, in the hierarchy of management here. So he was very good at extorting people and taking money from them, so good that he gets promoted. Now he has other tax collectors under him that have to answer to him. So not only is he an enemy of the people, he's probably not well-liked within the tax collector system, just trying to make Rome happy. But he seemed to be very good at it. And so you can sense the tension of the story and and here is a tax collector that when you know even when the when uh, they were writing this down in the New Testament they would often say sinners and tax collectors because tax collectors seem to have their own bracket of being sinners now you have a chief tax collector not a very well liked man but he heard of Jesus he wants to come and see Jesus and the crowds are big and he is short. So he climbs a tree. Then in verse 5, Jesus reaches the spot. He looks up and he says to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Now, a lot of things going on here. I am sure there were other people in the trees that day. Zacchaeus wasn't the only guy in town that figured if I climb a tree, I could see better. I'm sure the trees were littered with people. And these two had never met. We don't have any record of them meeting before. And yet here comes Jesus through all of these people, these crowds. There are trees obviously around as well. He stops where Zacchaeus, one of probably many in the trees, are there. He looks up at him and calls him by name. Asks him to come down, I'm going to your place. This is just amazing. You know, we kind of uh, take it for granted because we know this story well, but you just stop and think of it. And this is just amazing what's going on. And again, chief tax collector, right? Sinner, tax collectors, chief tax collectors. You can imagine the buzz that's going on in town. The man everybody hated. Jesus is going to lunch with him. Verse 6, So Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to say, isn't this great? No. They began to mutter. Just hear the buzz in the crowd of all the talk that's going on. He's gone to be the guest of a sinner? They're thinking, this is supposed to be a holy man. We've heard what this guy is doing, and he's choosing Zacchaeus to go over to his place? Not the local rabbi, not the Pharisees, not the teachers, not anybody like that? He's going to be with Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus stood up in verse 8 and said, Lord, said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody at anything, I will pay back four times the amount. 
And Jesus said to him, Today the salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And so here we have, and, and again, we, we don't know if this is all crunched together in one little episode or if this is drawn out a little bit, that, you know, the dinner is taking place and Jesus is here. But either way we look at this, we know that as Jesus calls Zacchaeus out by name and he comes down to, to meet the Lord, he immediately has a change of heart. And so last week we looked at salt and light that Jesus calls us to be in this world. And we said light was the, was the offense of living out our faith, that it, it drives back darkness. And we are drawn to it because Jesus is the light, then we're called to reflect it in our world. Salt was uh, the, the defense in it, that salt uh, uh, slows decay, it preserves. And so followers of Jesus are called to, to push back the darkness, but also to seek out social injustices and, and to make sure that, that, that we do things that, that meet the, the needs of those around us. They both go hand in hand. And when I was reading this from Zacchaeus, I, I read it differently, that immediately as Jesus calls him out and enters into relationship with Zacchaeus, you see the salt and light just work so perfectly together in this relationship. That as Zacchaeus knows who Jesus is, you see this immediate repentance, this change of heart that takes place in him, and immediately he acknowledges, all that I have done has been wrong up to this point, and I need to make it right. And we're told that he gives away half of his possessions. And anybody that he is wrong, he's required by the law to give back so much, according to the Old Testament. He goes way above and beyond that. And makes things right. Because Jesus has made things right in here. And how do we commemorate this man that, that had a change of heart and uh, immediately repents of his sin, goes, gives away half his wealth, and as a story in the New Testament, how do we commemorate him? What do we call him? A wee little man. And a wee little man was he. Remember that song? Climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if that's the best way <laughs> to commemorate this guy. If you did something this great, I don't think you'd want to. Anyway, I won't go there. It's amazing what Zacchaeus has done. He repents. It's a change of heart. Immediately it flows through him because he sees the injustice that he has created and he needs to make things right before the Lord. Amazing. Amazing. All the time. There's what going on throughout the community? Muttering. You know what's being said. I know what's being said. Because chances are, I've been more of the mutterer than the chief tax collector. Right? That's the tension in the story. If you were to look at that and you said, there's Jesus, there's a chief tax collector, there's a whole lot of people that want to hear about Jesus, who's, who's the hero in all of this? Well, it would be me and Jesus. But it's the worst character in this story that meets Jesus and has changed. Sometimes we mutter about those things. Lord, that person is useless. God, why would you do anything good for this person or that person? The list goes on. You might not phrase it in that way, but we've all been there. And the true reality of this story is that we need to remind ourselves that without Jesus, we are the chief tax collector the worst of sinners and yet here is Jesus who walks through the crowd and finds the worst sinners among us and to paraphrase Paul of whom I am chief calls us by name 
and enters into relationship. There's a verse I was sharing with our youth group on Friday night, and it fits into this well, and it's Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And it says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Just go back to verse 1 there for me, Caleb. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. This word is important for us. It means a couple of different things here, and I wrote it down just so I could get it right. Oh, I was like, ooh, I lost my paper. It means two things. Condemnation means judgment against someone, and it also means the expression of strong disapproval. That second meaning really stood out to me, the expression of strong disapproval. And so when I was reading this story about Zacchaeus, everybody had an expression of strong disapproval against Zacchaeus. You may look at your own story and where you are, where you've been, and there might be strong disapproval against what you were doing and how you were living your life. And I love that with this story that we're reading here this morning, as Zacchaeus comes, and as Jesus walks down, he makes eye contact with him. He says, Zacchaeus, you come down. I'm going to your house today. And immediately his heart has changed. He has this amazing expression of gratitude as he makes things right in the community that he lives in. And you tied into this verse for Zacchaeus. Now there is no condemnation against Zacchaeus because he is in Christ Jesus. And it doesn't matter about the community's approval. It just mattered about Zacchaeus and Jesus. And now to put us in this tree, in the sycamore tree, with Jesus. And this amazing invitation, Mike, you come down. I'm going to your house. Put you in that tree. Put your whole story in that tree. And Jesus walking through and saying, you come down for I'm going to your house today. And with the same response as Zacchaeus is, we enter into a relationship with Jesus, we acknowledge him as Lord and Savior, we ask for the forgiveness of our sin to change our life, to change our heart as his light shines in. And then claim this verse for your own. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for, put your name in here, who are in Christ Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Because sometimes we come to Jesus and we choose to carry our baggage. And it's heavy. And when Jesus forgives, he cuts the straps to our backpack and it drops at his feet. That burden is ours no more to carry. Our past no longer defines us. But Jesus does. And therefore there is no judgment against me there's no expression of strong disapproval from Jesus against me. There's just love, forgiveness, and hope. Man, I love that. So I shared with the youth on Friday that when you look at this verse here in Romans that there is no condemnation against us in Jesus, it doesn't matter what our past is. When we give it over to Jesus, he now defines us. Don't worry about the disapproval of others. Just keep your eyes focused on Jesus. I was thinking not too long ago, I was just reading about um, the war in the Ukraine and how 
the Ukrainians were telling the Russian soldiers that if you lay down your arms and come to us, we're going to take care of you. You know, if you choose not to fight against us anymore, come, we will provide food, we'll provide shelter, we will take care of you. And I thought of this in this context that without Jesus, the Bible says we're an enemy of God because we are doing things that displease God. Uh, we, we are, you know, uh, fighting against what he wants for us in this world, whether it's in our own personal lives or the way we live out in our world. The Bible tells us that when we come to Jesus, we are a friend of God. We are adopted into his family. All rights and privileges are given to us and, uh, and nothing is held against us anymore. And it's all done by Jesus just calling our name, us coming to him and laying it all down. We are welcomed into his family. Not only is this a great message to hear of the Bible, not my sermon. Although, you know, it's pretty good. But no. Uh, it is also a great privilege to take this to the world. Because think of it this morning as we looked at this and we talked about Zacchaeus and his past and how accepted by Jesus that there's no longer any condemnation for him. Nothing is held against him anymore. He's forgiven and he was set free. And I said, put your own name in there. And didn't it feel good to hear that? It's also good to share that. To go into this world and to take this great message with us as we interact with people as we live it out in relationship with others and lead them to Jesus. And God uses this great story of forgiveness in our world and he is constantly wooing people unto himself so they can come and receive this forgiveness. And we play a vital role in sharing this message, living this message, so that people may receive. In fact, I was just talking with someone this past week about someone in their family and how they were so deeply concerned about that person that they had what we would call a hard heart, that they just didn't seem to want to hear about Jesus. This person was faithful in just bringing up this conversation whenever he could. Not to weigh the person down, but just to keep the door open. We were talking about this, and then all of a sudden, it seemed like that person was willing to hear about the love of Jesus. And they embraced Jesus as their own. Their heart was softened to the gospel. And they began to follow Jesus. We said, isn't that a miracle? Sometimes we see miracles in different ways, and we think, you know, that it's a, a change in something physical and all that sort of stuff. But miracles happen when people's hearts are softened to the gospel as well. And we need to celebrate those moments. That all of a sudden they hear their name being called, they climb down out of that tree and they embrace Jesus. They are changed forever. So two things as I reflect upon this for us this morning. Is one, remember your moment in the tree when Jesus called your name. Remember that because I think it's so important for us as we live our life that we remember the moment that Jesus called us and we accepted him as our Lord and Savior because I think it needs to encourage us each day as we seek to follow him. For Zacchaeus, I'm sure it wasn't easy for him to have this change of heart to do all of these great things and then to continue to live a life that would honor Jesus. We don't read that he left his career path of being a chief tax collector. I like to think that maybe now he set a moral standard for the other tax collectors under him of how to do their job well and to honor Jesus. I don't know. I'm just adding that in there. But I'm sure that as Zacchaeus went forward, he always remembered that moment in the tree. And it helped him through the difficult days of following Jesus, and it reminded him of who needed to receive the praise and the honor on the good days of following Jesus. And I also want us to remember that as we go through life, 
And as we seek to be salt and light in this world, that we have this amazing opportunity of sharing the name of Jesus so that people can be set free, so that no condemnation can be held against them. And if you are not a follower of Jesus this morning, and I really want you to think about this moment of Zacchaeus in a tree who was searching for Jesus. Little did he know that Jesus was searching for him. Jesus said, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. He's looking for you. He's looking for you in the tree. He's looking for you in your, you know, wherever, you know, you are stuck in life or whatever is going on. Jesus is looking for you. He's calling you by name and asking you to come and to follow him. And when you give your life to Jesus, it is a moment that changes you forever. What a powerful story of this man who was vertically challenged climbed a tree thinking that he was trying to see Jesus and all along Jesus was looking for him. And if Jesus is looking for you and you respond to him then those words that today is a day of salvation for you that it will come to your house as you come to the Lord. What a great story. Thank you, Jesus, for what you offer to us when we come to you. Let us pray. Father, this is such a powerful piece of Scripture as we look at Zacchaeus. And I think, you know, here was this man who was uh, just wanting to get a glimpse of this person that he's heard so much about. And so he climbs this tree. Maybe he didn't want to blend in with the crowd. Maybe he, the crowd would be hostile towards him. And so he's just looking for a safe place to be. And as he couldn't peer over the shoulders of those around him, he climbs up and begins to look for Jesus. And all along, Jesus is walking through that crowd looking for Zacchaeus. Calls him by name. Zacchaeus gives his life service of Jesus. Father, maybe that is somebody's story here today. Maybe somebody is even watching online at home and just, just feeling the, the pressures of life and just feeling, you know, their, their, their past is, is, is so heavy, it is so dark that the burden they're under is weighing them down. Father, may they realize that Jesus is looking for them and calling them by name to come into relationship with him, to lay down all that, that they think defines them so that he can redefine them as, as his own. This one belongs to me now. And as we read in the book of Romans that now there is no more condemnation that can be held against us. There is no more judgment. There is no more expression of strong disapproval because we are embraced by Jesus and the power of forgiveness because he died on the cross in our place and rose again so that we can be set free. God, may we also live out this story as followers of Jesus. May we be salt and light in this world that people see us live in a way that is radically different to the way the world lives. And may it always bear witness of the change that Jesus has made within us. Father, bless us on this journey as we go out into this community to be a light for Jesus 
to be salt, to, to slow the decay, to preserve our world, so that m- many others will taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless us on this journey, God. Amen.
love that. I think Murray put that together a few years ago with the pictures of our community. It reminds us of our mission field as we go out and proclaim the name of Jesus. If you ever want to talk about what it means to, to follow Jesus, you just feel him calling your name, or maybe you just have questions about it or anything, feel free to, to stay after the service and talk to me or connect with me sometime throughout the week. Uh, we would love to be able to talk about Jesus together. On our Sunday, as uh, we go through our act of remembrance, we always close our service with our second national anthem. Uh, this is our first time that we sing it as God Save the King. So uh, we will remain standing as we sing God Save the King. And then we will be uh, dismissed.